I'm Tricia Parks, uh, the founder and CEO of Parks Associates, a Dallas-based research firm. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley. Parks Associates is a market research and analysis firm, and we're dedicated to that very broad statement, digital living. We serve the companies in the many categories that are creating and marketing innovative products and services in the U.S. and, of course, throughout the world. We sell research reports, subscription services, that is annual research services, custom research for specific clients on specific tasks, and we, in addition, host a few, as in two or three, events per year that enhance, we hope, the industries we serve. We're not a conference house. We host these events exclusively for the industries we serve, for those industries and for the people in them. For those who know the business, the bigger. And we're boutique in that we are dedicated to this singular fuzzy category, digital living. A, a Forrester and an IDC, uh, and I respect both, are very broad in what they study. They earn a great deal of their revenues on IT services into corporate America, for corporate America. We don't. What we study are the consumer markets and the value chains that serve those markets. So whether it's the consumer at home, or the consumer at work, or the consumer on the go, we're interested in all things digital that can enhance his or her life. Our clients range from energy companies to technology companies such as Intel or Microsoft, to CE companies such as Philips or Sony or Samsung, to service companies, cable operators, telephone operators, satellite operators, to smaller companies that are working to get their products better known to structured wiring companies, to controls companies such as a Honeywell or a Leviton. Uh, really, it's, it's a broad swath of companies, but their commonality is that they are serving the consumer and they're going in the home or to the consumer, not to, a cor not to McDonald's. Parks Associates has been, oh gosh, 20 years in business, but clearly the term digital wasn't where we started. We started with a longer phrase that said we serve the companies that are crossing the boundaries of their core business into new businesses through networks. So that's where we started. Uh, and then, of course, the internet and the advances in the computer and broadband and all the while controls. So we started there. I worked for a company in the early 80s called Future Computing. And Future Computing was quite famous for being the consultancy that helped IBM to find their distribution strategy for the IBM PC. So in that way, we served the computing industry, so my backdrop was computing. Even while I was there, the CE companies, way back then, were looking at all of the computing capabilities and saying, oh my gosh, what are we going to do and how is this going to change? So we were beginning to see, even then, the seeds of convergence. So the consumer companies back then, the operators, the service operators back then had an inkling that something would be happening. Nobody knew quite what, and that includes me. But what I was absolutely sure of is that there would be convergence. The computing would cross into categories, 
the categories would change, they would blur, it would become amorphous, and that companies have very different cultures. Industries have different cultures. A, oh gosh, a company like Carrier Air Conditioning, they have a, a length of life for their product, 12 to 14 years. A service is a major component, so is maintenance. The cost is strong, and they have regulatory mandates. The computing companies want to turn product over with innovations because they need to every two to three years. They want it foolproof, and they're software dependent. A CE company like a Thompson RCA, my computer is a Thompson RCA, purchased when RCA was RCA, so it's that old. They want it fail proof, no break, keep working, simple. So their motivations and their entire structures serve where they've been. The world's changing. Our job is to present information of a quality that is good enough to allow companies solid decision making as they look to the future. That's what we do. There's a book called The Wisdom of Crowds that was written several years ago. And in many ways it reflects what I believed and believe, but is very well stated. Very good writer. Actually, a Wall Street guy. Uh, connections has several purposes, but the, the common purpose is to increase understanding among different groups so that there is a clearer common understanding of where the reality of situations are. From that, there can be forward progress to solve any challenges. A secondary, and turns out very important part of it, is just to let people get to know each other from different industries and different cultures and different countries. Parks only does, well now we have Connections Europe, but to date we've only had one other conference a year. And that conference is in the fall and it's focused. Its name was Fall Focus. And we pick a topic, a hot topic. It could be IPTV or it could be personalization of entertainment. Or, and we have a focused, smaller event, maybe 150 to 200, that addresses a singular topic in great detail. So those are our two events. Now we've announced Connections Europe, so that means three events. Parks Associates has had the dream of, of going to Europe since before 2000, really. And we, I sought to, and we've been studying Europe since then. But I put down on myself and everybody several ground rules. We have to earn the right to go. We have to know our stuff. And then in the last two years, we have been getting requests from some of our clients, both U.S. and European, to go to Europe with the connections. So we concluded that we would under a few conditions, and that most important of which was to have very strong European anchors. Uh, the marketplace that will be spoken of is Europe in all its complexity. The companies will be global. I mean, Intel is global, but the marketplace is European. Therefore, this needs to have needed to have strong European anchors and support. And so, getting Deutsche Telekom and Siemens and Zensis was very important. So we have those now. There'll be many other sponsors that are guiding lights for what things we do to operate in a European culture. How we structure it will be European guiding lines. We are going to focus on allowing the companies that operate there to discuss and analyze those issues important to bettering success in European countries. We expect actually our goal 
of course, you know, we haven't done this yet, so this is a goal, not a past, is 65% European, 35% rest of world. So certainly we intend to have American companies there, certainly. But we want 65% of our attendees to be executives, strategists, planners, participants in European markets. Asia is in our sights. And we actually are participating in an event where we're organizing it, but not owning it, in Singapore this June. There are many reasons that we chose Europe first. One of which is we understand it a little better. We don't want to be too strong in that we understand it, but we have an affinity. The second is we know how to operate a little better in Europe, just pure logistics. And the third is that we think Asia will be quite a task and we will undertake it third. In, in general, our relationship with CEA is connections. Other than that, we have no relationship other than a good, strong, friendly business relationship. Uh, CEA is a very important an honorable association within the U.S. They do a great job and we feel really proud that they've chosen us to partner with. IPTV in Europe. Um, understanding the... In Europe, understanding the different regulatory and cultural issues from one country to the next is a serious issue for Europeans, but for everyone else, for sure. So understanding the markets in terms of channels, distribution, regulatory inhibitors and catalysts, government roles or lack thereof, uh, these are all, while they're important in the, in the U.S. when we do it, there's, there's one, generally. Uh, we're a little different in Texas than we are in New York. One rule guides us, federal government. IPTV is hot, controls are hot in Europe, uh, particularly I believe in the area of energy management. But then lighting too, and that could be aesthetics and energy or convenience. Of course, France has, has just rocketed ahead with broadband since competition and reductions in price and making it very easy. Uh, not every country in Europe has done so yet. And the question is, when will they? Or do they need to? Do they want to? If not, why not? If so, why? So it, there's a little bit of each country is a little different. We are going into our second round of global research. We now do consumer and secondary work in 13 nations. Clearly, France is one of them. And we have uh, something called the Digital Living Index that measures the readiness of each nation, including Korea and Australia and Japan and India, uh, US, Canada in the likelihood of readiness for a different series and types of applications. So there's been more interest in us since, of course, we've gone outside the U.S. And we're going into our second round this summer. So it may be that some French companies m may find this valuable. Uh, they can call us, they can email me at trisha at parksassociates.com. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley.